Hi, I'm Brian, and today we're looking at the ACCA paper P5, March June 2017, past year paper. I'll be looking at question 2, requirement A, for this paper, which is question is over here. And uh, as usual, my approach will always be this five step approach where we will assess the question first. Don't waste your time reading the entire content first. You look at the question first and then only read because there's a lot of stuff and we need to focus on what's relevant. You find relevant data, we evaluate it, you draw from the knowledge from your studies, and finally, very important, we need to answer the requirements. So, first of all, let's take a look at the question, which is over here. They have used the word calculate. So, calculate means there is numbers involved. So, when we read the question text, we can probably ignore anything which is not related to numbers first, and then later we can find that out. This will save you some time in the exam, and you can do this during your reading time. They have mentioned something called cost gap per unit. Now, this word cost, this phrase cost gap should trigger um, some knowledge in you, uh, something related to target costing. So target costing is up the F5 topic, and for this question, you don't really need anything more than that. So it's an easy six marks to learn because it's all prior knowledge. Okay, and they've also mentioned per unit, so we keep that in mind. This is for three years of Booster's life. I expect Booster to be some kind of product, and you need to do it for three years, taking into account all estimated costs. So you need to find all the costs available within the question prompt and account for them in the target costing computation. So let me show you my format first of all. It will be an Excel spreadsheet. And at the top part over here, I have the two key formulas we need to use to calculate the cost gap. The first formula is target cost equals to target selling price minus, tar minus target profit margin. And the second formula is cost gap equals to estimated cost minus target cost. If you need a little bit of a refresher, I've included the ACCA article on target costing in the about section of this video. So go there and download it and take a read to refresh your knowledge. So let's go to the question prompt and try to find some information which is relevant to us at the moment. And first of all, we can see that um, in the third paragraph, Pit Lane is building a prototype of a new component called Booster. So it's, that's, the, that's the item there. We are looking at Booster, which is the name of the product. And the first piece of uh, financial information that we have, which is useful, would probably be here. Um, Pit Lane shareholders insist that you achieve a financial performance objective of 15% net profit margin after all costs for the duration of the scheme. This 15% is relevant here to the target profit margin. Okay, We also have Booster's total fixed costs. Now fixed costs will be related to this part of the equation, estimated cost, uh, including a 2.8 million upfront development cost. Question, do we need to include the 2.8 million in our calculation? The answer is Yes, because the, the financial objective given is a net profit margin, we should include development costs. However, uh, nothing much needs to be added because it's already included within the 10 million number which is given over here. The product team believes that certain features, which is an app as well as high quality packaging over here, will allow it to charge 10% more than the average price of its competitors. So this is something that we may or may not want to include. We'll take a look at it later. You have, see the marketing team has questioned the overall value of these two features. Pit Lane has estimated the direct cost for Booster in Appendix 2, which is given in the next page. So we'll look at that later, which is, this is relevant for the estimated cost over here. And they have included highly skilled workers who are paid 30% more than other workers in the business. But this is already accounted for in the cost estimate, so you don't really need to adjust any numbers. Okay, so now that we know all this, let's take a look at Appendix 2. And let's take a look at our formula. So we have Appendix 1, which is over here, estimated market data. There must be a reason why they gave this to you, so we'll think about it later. There's the average price. We're going to use this as our base price because up here we are going to compare this 
to average prices and we are going to charge in fact we want to charge the customer 10 percent more than the average price so we need to use this as our base now appendix 2 gives you all the direct costs 134 total so that would be relevant to the estimated cost section of the cost gap calculation so let's take a look at my working over here and first of all my first line would be the selling price so how do how do we read this uh, formula I have my notes on the far right of the calculation so this would be on par with competition so selling price as you read as you see it deteriorates because the average price of the components by your competitors over here also deteriorates okay so that's from appendix one there is a 10 percent higher price now um, the examiner's answer for this question includes the 10 percent higher price within their target costing computation as you can see in my note over here due to proposed features and packaging although the inclusion of target costing is debatable that's my note because i would i would prefer that when you do a target costing computation we be a bit more prudent and when and because the marketing team has questioned the value of these two features i would not include it within the target costing computation now if you are going to ignore this line which is perfectly acceptable for a P5 answer you will need to make a note you maybe put an asterisk over here and put that new 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 and say that you are exercising prudence and uh, you don't feel that it should be part of the target costing computation but for the sake of um, similarity to the examiner's answer I will include it in the computation now the next part that we're going to take a look at is here now from he this is the sum the estimated selling price is 198, 187, 176. It's deteriorating over three years. And you have a 15% net profit margin, the return required by shareholders in paragraph four. And that will be over here. So that will give you finally our target cost per unit as shown on the screen, 168.3 in the year 2018, 158.9 in 2019, and 149.6 in 2020. So we're going to the next part of our computation, which is over here. And that would be related to our cost gap computation over here. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to copy paste the, the total direct cost per unit, which is given to you in Appendix 2. So Appendix 2 is over here. They have given you the total, which is 134 over here. So I just put in the number there. Now we have a slight computation for fixed overheads per unit, which is over here. Now we need to compute fixed overheads per unit because in the question they have given to us fixed overheads over here. Booster's total fixed cost during the scheme is 10 million, including 2.8 million of upfront development. We find this in paragraph 5, so my note has paragraph 5 over here. Development cost of 2.8 million is already included in the 10 million dollar figure. So you don't really need to do anything special for the 2.8 million. Now, we need to find the number of units sold, which the answer is 227,000. But where do we get that computation from? You will get that computation from here. They have given you the total market size, 600,000, 500,000, and 460,000, the deteriorating market size over the three years. And they've given you estimated market share for the total market. So from here is a simple computation of 600,000 multiplied by 10% and you take the sum product of these computations and you will get 227,000. So 600k multiplied by 10% plus 500k multiplied by 15% and 460k multiplied by 20%, you will get 227,000 units over here. We have a simple uh, OAR or fixed overhead absorption computation. $10 million divided by the total demand gives you an OAR of 44.05 per unit. So that's the same across the board over here. And so finally, we have take the sum of these two numbers and we get 178.1 estimated total cost per unit. Now, once we found the estimated total cost per unit, We'll now be looking at the target cost, which we have found from our earlier computation, which is over here. 168.3, 158.9, and 149.6. So we're going to subtract 
the target cost from the estimated total cost and that will finally give us our cost gap per unit as you can see there's a deteriorating number it gets worse over the three years of 9.8 in 2018 19.2 in 2019 and 28.5 in 2020 so that would satisfy the requirements of the question over here which says you need to calculate the cost gap per unit for each of the three years all right thank you very much for watching um, you please feel free to download the my worked answer in the about section of this video and um, yeah please take a look at some of my other videos uh, for and subscribe to for this p5 examination papers and good luck with your exams thank you very much